Guys, today we want to talk about vertex distance. Vertex distance is probably the most important topic that you can master before taking your NCLE examination. Um, it, it's, there are questions directly just based upon vertex distance, and there are questions that lead up to um, an answer which require the use of being able to have a working knowledge of vertex distance calculation. Uh, many people will try and overcomplicate it and you know, break out the compensated vertex distance formula, and that's great and that has a purpose, but for the examination, you really just have to have a, a foundational understanding of how it works in relationship to contact lenses. So first off, what is vertex distance? So vertex distance has to deal with the manifest refraction or um, the eyeglass refraction. So when, when the patient is sitting in front of the foreopter, there is a, a distance between the eye and the foreopter itself. It's typically about 12 millimeters. That distance is called the vertex distance. It can also be defined as the distance between the, the cornea, the front surface of the eye, and the back surface of a pair of eyeglass lenses. That distance is the vertex distance. Um, it has an effect on the power of the lens or the perceived power of the lens. You'll hear that term and you'll see it on questions because the lens power does not change, right? It's still a, you know, a negative seven diopter sphere. Um, that power doesn't change, but the perceived power, how our eyes take that information in, that changes depending on the distance that that lens is from the eye. So some key points to know about vertex distance that will help you to wade through some of these questions and answers. The manifest refraction, the, the glasses refraction, has a built-in vertex distance. Uh, it's generally, like I said, 12 millimeters. Um, contact lenses, there is no vertex distance, right? Because that contact lens sits you know, in situ right on the eye. If it's a soft lens, it drapes the cornea. It's, it is in contact with the eye. There is no difference in uh, millimeter difference. So what you see is what you get. That's why when they prescribe contact lenses, vertex distance talks about altering the prescription from the glasses refraction to a contact prescription because the lens sits on the eye. So what's foundational is knowing that as any lens moves further away from the eye, it gains perceived plus power. Um, and this is a kind of difficult topic to understand sometimes because a minus power lens becomes less minus or more plus, right? So that minus four diopter refraction out here, if it's sitting on the eye, it's gonna behave more like a, a minus 375, which is more plus than a minus four diopter lens. Likewise, if it's a, a plus eight diopter lens, um, that's refracted out here. If it's being placed on the eye, like contact lenses, it's gonna gain more plus power in the contact lens prescription. So it's gonna be more like a, a plus 875, right? So regardless of a minus power refraction or plus power refraction in the eyeglass refraction, it's going to gain a perceived plus power when you convert it to contact lens prescription. So something to know to base your answers around is a 10 diopter lens, which is a, a very strong prescription, as you would know, um, traveling 12 millimeters, that average refracted vertex distance to being in situ on the cornea, um, you gain one diopter of strength. So a plus 10 diopter refraction would equate to a plus 11 diopter contact lens. Now let's think about that. All that's saying is when the patient was sitting in the exam chair, and they're refracted, and their perfect prescription is a plus 10, when you convert that to contact lenses, you have to give them a plus 11, because the plus 11 on the eyes is acting as if it's a plus 10 away from the eyes during the refraction. An easy way to remember this is think about people who drop their reading glasses down on the edge of their nose to help them read better. There's a reason they do that, it's subconscious, because it's gaining plus powered strength. That's a great uh, mnemonic device to use. If you think about, you can't remember the relationship there. Just think people drop their glasses down to help them read because it's giving magnification, giving plus power strength. So when they're refracted further away than contacts, 
oh yeah, it's acting more plus. So the contact lenses that I'm prescribing need to be more plus than the eyeglass refraction. So yeah, a minus 10 diopter lens, you know, it's gonna act more like a, a minus nine on the eyes for contact lenses. Because again, it's one diopter of strength uh, change for 10 diopters. So on your test, you know, they're gonna have two answers generally that will be in the right direction. So for the minus 10, they might give you a minus uh, nine, which would be the correct answer. And they might give you a minus seven, which would be obviously way off base. And then they'll give you two that are kind of going the opposite way. They'll give you a minus 11 or a minus 14. So you could think through a lot of these without actually having to memorize it and, and utilize the formula for your exam. And we know today for contact lens fitting, we can just pull out a, a handy chart and refer to it, but it's, it's very imperative to understand that relationship that lenses act more plus power further away um, and act more minus closer towards the eye. And to be able to use that in contact lens fitting, and more importantly, to be able to use that so you can get NCLE certified. Um, write some comments below if you have questions about vertex distance. Or if this video was helpful, be sure to subscribe to the channel. I'll be trying to put out more videos here in the near future. Thank you.